back for another episode of Go Vote Annapolis. I'm your host, Karma Cell Brown. Some know me as Cell Spitfire. We're here in downtown Annapolis today, here in Ward 1, and uh, we're speaking with Alderwoman Ellie Tierney. Uh, pleasure to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing just great. A little warm, but yes. I think uh, that's to be expected. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a hot day. Yeah. Um, but glad to have you here for a great questioning session um, to understand a little bit more about you, your position as Alderwoman, mm -hmm. and your views um, on the city. Yeah. Um, and just to start out the interview, I wanted to ask uh, if you could describe your background and uh, how it has prepared you to run for city council here in Annapolis. Okay, uh, well, I guess there's two, two reasons there is my, my upbringing. Uh, my mom always taught me to have empathy for everyone and that's one of my, um, my best traits is to really care about everyone. And that's sort of the underlying issue why I wanted to get involved. But my background is in civil engineering and construction and I had a 30 year career uh, in commercial construction and it was time to, to sort of kind of retire. And uh, my husband and I um, bought this house that's behind us here. Uh, I didn't think this would be so emotional to be standing in front of it, but it was our bed and breakfast for about a decade. Uh, and uh, so living here and running a bed and breakfast, I fell in love with Annapolis. We, we knew of Annapolis from living, uh, and we came from Washington, D.C., and we used to come out here with the boys when they were munchkins and go to the market house, and I used to lose them with you know, the chicken and the hot sauce. So we knew that Annapolis was going to be our next, uh, our next experience. Uh, but what I learned was that it was an aging city that needed a lot of love and care. And again, my background as a civil engineer, I thought, wow, maybe I'm here for a reason. There were some um, development issues down at the waterfront that sort of jeopardized our maritime. Um, and so, I got involved, uh, there was a group called Save Annapolis, um, and then from there, I joined the Ward 1 Residents Association, and I was president, and then um, I ran for, for office. So here I am, <laughs> running again. Nice, so now that you've already had your chance to be in office and you're running again, what do you feel like is your, your strength in, in your position here in the city? I think one of my strengths, again, is, is to, um, to involve everyone as much as possible in, 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 in becoming involved. Um, I, one of my, my best strengths is that I reach out to everybody. It's really important that I keep my residents engaged. When I get feedback, that's usually the best compliment I have is that I always keep them informed. Um, you know, with my email blasts. I get them involved with city council meetings and let them know what's coming, you know, coming up on the agenda. Um, so that's, that's been, you know, that's been my most um, positive thing. Um, but also um, my, you know, my knowledge of some of these uh, big projects coming up, um, my background is very advantageous that way. We are finally gonna be controlling sea level rise and it's gonna involve, you know, some you know, raising uh, you know an existing parking lot eight feet and putting in a beautiful space. So I'm I'm really excited about that. Good. So uh, circling back uh, to your uh, your sorry, circling back to your uh, quote about you sending out a lot of emails. Uh, what other ways do you feel like, or what ways do you already do to communicate with your constituents outside of email, like for your older constituents who who may not be on the computer? What are other ways that people can follow you and see some of your messages or see what you have going on in the city? Well, that's a good question. I try to be visible as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for that. Um, you know, Annapolis is full of events, especially downtown. Um, with the outside um, eating now, with the, the pandemic brought that on, and it's just a wonderful thing. And every time I go down, you know, to, to Market House, or I, see, I see somebody every Wednesday morning, uh, I have coffee with with your alder woman, uh, and it's um, it, that's a huge hit. So, for new residents or people who may not be familiar with you, how would you describe your leadership style and the ways that you operate in office? It's very hands-on. Um, you know, my my campaign is really um, you know the ground up, and and um, my my style is really reaching out to people individually. Uh, you know, a new residence came, if I find out about them, I'll leave them a little note, you know, on their door saying, you know, I'm your alder woman. And, and that actually, you know, goes along 
long way. You know, people want to be involved, and and it is sort of a you know overwhelming city in some respects. So um, that's my my greatest I think attribute is the one on one. Um, and last uh, question, uh, what what committees would best fit your talents here in Annapolis? Standing committees, as far as the city council. Yeah. Well, um, right now um, the, the mayor, you know, made those 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 assignments, and I'm on transportation, which is which is really good because we are on the verge of implementing different transit modes. To get also on environmental matters, involved with the finance committee, so. I'm hoping that I'll get more involved if I'm reelected. <laughs> That's great. It's get great getting to know you, and I uh, have plenty more questions, but I would love to move around your ward and learn a little bit more about it and get into some more questions if that's okay with you. Sure, that's fine. So we'll be back with you guys. So we're back. We're touring the, your wonderful ward here in downtown Annapolis. Uh, any specific reason why you chose this location here? Oh, yes, absolutely. And um, a couple of reasons. Um, there, first, the, the optimism as far as um, what the, the, the pandemic gave us the opportunity uh, to, to really optimize our main street, you know, with the eating outdoors. Uh, they, they, I'm very proud of the fact that it kept our restaurants and businesses afloat. Uh, and you know, I know people are getting tired of the orange and white barriers, but we'll, we'll work on that. Um, so there is that, you know, opportunity to to expand the use of Main Street but the the main reason um, that I chose this location is you know I am a dreamer as well you know as the mayor and and my dream is that we can have uh, residents live downtown and um, as as an engineer I, I made sure that um, last term we're delaying repaving Main Street but so that we did not have to wait that long. Uh, we installed these water lines, uh, and, and that's a, a, what you call a, a tap, if you will, so that these uh, businesses, uh, the building owners, can tie into it and, and sprinkle their building to make it uh, safe for living upstairs. Uh, that's where the government needs to you know, intervene and to sort of create this jump start and we are gonna, going to um, offer, you know, sprinkler loans, uh, and we'll prioritize by um, if somebody is introducing housing, we're, we'll increase the loan value. And so the question is, is how does it become workforce housing? That's our next step, ideally, because you know, back in the day, people lived up above, and you can see these underutilized beautiful windows uh, that right now it, it appears that that the, the building owners are using for storage. Um, and then just circling back as well on disparities in housing, uh, how would you rectify some of those disparities in housing and add a little bit more diversity in this ward? Yeah, that's, you know, that's where we have to say, you know, are we one Annapolis? What I did when I was uh, Ward 1 president is uh, you know, I learned that Ward 1 is just not downtown residents. It's residents including uh, Bloomsbury Square, which is city housing. And we didn't have any um, representation from Bloomsbury Square for this neighborhood association. So I, you know, I became friends with a wonderful woman who, who ran the residents association, the resident advisory committee. We're still friends. Um, to bring her in, to bring her issues, um, and and then you know just simple things you know when we have um, greenscape where we uh, you know plant plant flowers everywhere um, you know I make sure that we go to Bloomsbury Square and beautify it uh, and, and make sure that you know I'm making sure that they um, that there's it's a residential parking district it, it, it's really unfortunate for, for some of them to have to pay for that. So, so you know, I, I, I waive that fee so that they can, you know, have their car and park it safely in front of their neighborhood. It's a challenge, though, because, you know, a lot of the city housing is, is you know, at the, at the end of the streets, you know, and it's, it's so maddening to me because we, we need to connect them, you know. I, because that goes into their core, you know. Why? Why am I living here at the end of a street where I don't have, you know, access? Um, 
I know Bloomsbury Square is walking distance to downtown and all, but it's still got that feel that it's, you know, not park. So I constantly try to engage them. Um, and that's really important that, you know, all of the Alda persons engage their, their, their disadvantaged communities. Um, there's wonderful, they're wonderful neighborhoods. Um, yeah. Um, one of the things that I think could increase engagement um, from city residents all throughout your ward would be access to public water. Um, are there any future plans to expand uh, public access to water in some of the neighborhoods that you mentioned and just downtown? Well, a lot of it is mindset, it, and this is a mindset change. For example, the city uh, is, you know, in the, in the comprehensive plan, it, that's really a priority, is equitable water access. And Ward 1 is lucky that a lot of these streets end at a park and the city is going through and prioritizing where, you know, the bulkheads are failing and all that. And they're having these neighborhood meetings to sort of decide what the best, you know, will there be a kayak launch? And the mindset that I gently have to tell the residents is that we're engaging you in the decision on what happens here, but this is for everyone. This is a public park. It's not just for the block, you know? So it's a huge mindset change. Uh, and, and, and the more we have, because the first reaction from residents is, oh my God, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have people coming with kayaks and all this. Well, logically, the more we have, you know, the less, the less traffic or whatever you're afraid of will happen. So it's a, it, it, it's a real equitable approach to water, to water access. Yeah, they're beautiful, um, they're beautiful spaces. We're, we're, we're very fortunate in Ward 1 that they, they exist. Yeah, but they're for everyone. Great. So we're gonna move on to some more locations here in the beautiful Ward 1 with Alderwoman Ellie Tierney. And it's been great, so Thanks. let's keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> All right, so we know why this location means a lot to me. Um, of course, the artwork that I had a pleasure of painting here in your ward, but for the people watching, can you describe where we are exactly, what this location means to you, and how this fits into the vision of your future for not only the city of Annapolis, but... Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly why we're here. Uh, geographically, we're right on the, out, out, uh, the, the outer limits of, of Ward 1, uh, it, and the reason why I brought you here was to to show that um, there's other spaces besides you know downtown in the historic district. But most importantly, what we've introduced here with the mural is a place where people can come together. Um, the you know a, a common denominator with people is performances and uh, green space, and this has been a success. It's it's a temporary placemaking. Um, ultimately, there, there may or may not be a development here, but it, it, there's a stage for music. Uh, Juneteenth was, was, uh, was an amazing celebration. It was packed with people. Uh, it also is, is a bookend um, to, you know, we have City Dock and, and we have this, this space, and in between, uh, we have the Arts District. So this, uh, this is part of that, and what's really exciting is uh, we're getting these green spaces into our comprehensive plan knowing how it it is such an, an equitable um, application of, 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 of just smart growth and and bringing people together it means a lot speaking of diversity and you know us having Juneteenth here and you know this area being so-called white and, and things of that nature can you describe the ethnic and racial makeup in this ward and what are the specific is issues relating to that demographic and how would you address these issues and you could be specific if you like okay i i'm i don't know exact the exact numbers but uh, uh, the majority are, are white and and in the minority are hispanic and african american and it, it appears to be uh relative to housing affordability uh there's a wonderful neighborhood uh in ward one it's over there, <laughs> it's called Truxton Heights, and uh, and I love it because of its diversity. It's in and it and it may be because of, of the affordability. There's African Americans and Hispanics and um, that are in the majority uh, versus uh, in the minority. 
So I think the key thing to bring people in is, is affordability. And then the dichotomy that is so frustrating to me is that we have downtown residents that are predominantly white, and then where do we have African American? At city housing, you know, Bloomsbury Square. Why is that? You know, why that disparity? Um, so how do we how do we solve that? Is um, as I spoke earlier about introducing workforce housing, you know, downtown, where it, it can bring in hopefully some diversity. Um, you know, I spoke to the African American um, driver of this circulator and. Sometimes I take it downtown, and he said, you know, I always wanted to live downtown. And, you know, I said, well, why can't you find a place, rent or whatever? And he says, well, it's just a little bit too expensive. Um, so that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And, but, but I think, you know, I think we can get, uh, the mayor's objective is one Annapolis. Speaking of one Annapolis, I feel like this project for Go Vote Annapolis is going to be a true uh, encompassment of that. Um, so with that, we have a few questions from residents in your ward. Um, they're pretty much expressing their concerns and questions about some of the things here in, in your ward. Um, so if we can get into some sure. of those. Fire away. <laughs> yeah, I would like to first start with uh, Dirk Garretts, who is the former president of Murray Hill Residents Association. Um, one of his concerns about your ward is uh, crime and gun violence and break-ins. Um, what is your vision for, you know, bringing that down and, you know, fixing that issue here in the ward? Well, it's it, a couple of things. Uh, you know, through my communication, this, this, this is happening. You know, there have been break-ins to cars. There's been, um, there's been some theft in Murray Hill in particular. So, of course, you know, preventative. I, you know, I, I say to my constituents, the police will come to your house for free and evaluate your house to see where it could be subjected to break in. I mean, this is all sort of pre preventive uh, just on the surface. And I tell constituents to lock, you know, don't put valuables in your cars, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it, it's happening um, and it's happening a little bit more frequently. Um, ironically, just I am sitting down with um, the major with the Annapolis Police Department to talk about those concerns um, the next week. And then I also have a coffee with um, with a lieutenant who is responsible for community policing, uh, because what I'm hearing from from residents is is more patrol, if you will. Uh, and what does that mean? You know, uh, even if it's just a, a policeman just just doing a loop, you know, it's 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 a deterrent. I think. You know, I, we don't. I don't want, uh, you know, over policing, uh, but there's a, there's a strategic way of doing it so that it would uh, deter a lot of these crimes because it is upsetting to, to residents. Does the city of Annapolis um, have any future plans to implement 24-hour surveillance like we see in cities like Baltimore and Washington, D.C. to possibly combat violence and monitor it on a 24-hour basis opposed to some of the looping uh, suggestions that you stated? Well, we do, um, in touring the police uh, department, I was amazed at how many cameras we actually have. Uh, but the, uh, the missing component of that is 24-7 monitoring of those cameras. They're usually used for playing back after an incident has happened. Um, they have been successful in identifying um, people. Uh, you know, that's the challenge we have is in, in a budget uh, where we don't want to uh, raise, raise taxes. We have uh, a limited real estate of taxable, you know, real estate because of you know, the State House and Naval Academy. So it's always a challenge to, to monitor our budget. So where can we strategically add, you know, police to police? Where are they better? You know, are they better walking or are they better in, in the department? Those kind of questions we you know, rely on the police to answer, but it's, 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 you know, people want basic uh, services. They want to feel safe um, and they want a clean city. And uh, so that's, that's the balance that we have to keep, keep struggling through. Learned a lot of history, uh, learned a lot about how it functions and how you play a big part in it. Um, I wanted to give you a few minutes to just kind of explain you know, your goals for the city, your pretty much your elevator pitch to everyone of <laughs> why we should elect you and, and why you would be the best candidate for Ward sure. 1. Um, this is a very, 
this is a very important election it's a real get out the vote effort it's a validation i hope of what i have accomplished and the mayor has accomplished the last four years specifically the last year of the pandemic it also is an opportunity to to voice you know to to have a voice and what we've learned this i've learned the last four years is to have to navigate you know the opposition and the conflicts and to come to good legislation that elevates equitable use of water and workforce housing and smart growth and smart development and very enthusiastic comprehensive planner and i really look forward to having that that done and working with it on a another note where my experience comes in handy is the city dock redevelopment is going to be happening and i think with my background i feel like i can shepherd our residents anxiety about that it's a huge infrastructure project and a garage replacement so i feel like i'm in the right place at the right time with that and lastly i just want to say that my campaign is about being positive negativity and finger pointing doesn't doesn't really get us anywhere. You know, I I got caught up in that early on with some of the things um, and realized no, we want to be on the positive side to to get things done. Annapolis is an old city. It it needs love and care, and um, and the infrastructure and the historic district. And I think that with your help and and support, I would be honored to serve you for another four years to to move forward.